Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Can Do That DIY for another doll repaint video. Today I'm going to be customizing Honey, the doll that I designed and created myself. My main source of inspiration for this project is going to be horses and ponies. As a little boy, I was obsessed with my little pony and would do anything to get my hands on them. So this project definitely has a special place in my heart. Alright, let's get started. Here is the face I sculpted for Honey Horse. The ears are located at the top of the head cap. As you can see, she has a horse snout which includes her nose and her mouth. She has an adorable smile and cute downturned eyes. I also sculpted a pair of hooves that I'll be printing as well. I decided to print her in five different color options. I asked my followers on Instagram as well as on YouTube which color I should customize. Both on Instagram and YouTube, the majority picked Periwinkle. The other colors will be available to purchase on our website, www.thehoneydoll.com. If you haven't already checked out the website, go check it out. Starting now, you can customize and purchase your very own honey. Alright, now let's get into the project. Here is the Periwinkle Horse. She looks great. But now let's prep her for customization. I'll start by removing the head. Alright, here's the face. Now let's prime the face with two layers of Mr. Super Clear before we get started. Once that's fully dry, I'm going to lay out the eyes with a watercolor pencil. While I do that, I just have to say thank you so much for watching and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects. Also, make sure to follow my Instagram accounts. The Honey Doll Instagram will have news or updates for Honey, so make sure to follow that. Once I'm happy with the shape and it's all filled in, I'll do the same thing on the other side. After that, using a white watercolor pencil, I'll draw in the eyeliner shape. Alright, cool. Now using a lavender watercolor pencil, I'm going to mark out the cut crease as well as outline the eyeshadow. After that, using a pink watercolor pencil, I'll color in the waterline. Alright, now let's add some blushing to the face. I'll start with a rose pastel. Once I'm happy with the progress I've made so far, I'll seal in my work with a layer of Mr. Super Clear. On the next layer, I'll use a black watercolor pencil to fill in the eyeliner shape. I'll do one side and then I'll finish the other side off screen. Next I'll use a light pink pastel to soften up the blush color. On 
On the next layer, using a watered down white acrylic paint, I'll paint in the eyeshadow shade. Alright cool, I'll do the other eye off screen. Now using a pink perlite's mica powder, I'll add some sparkle and some highlight to the face. On the next layer, I'll use a purple pastel to add some color to the eyeshadow. I'll start at the outside and blend towards the center. After I did that, I realized I never blushed the ears. So let's blush the ears! Alright, now let's go back to the face and add some blue pastel to the eyeshadow. Alright, on the next layer, we'll paint in that lavender line that we drew earlier. As usual, I'll do one side and then the other side off screen. After that, I'll use a watered down black acrylic paint to fill in the eyeliner shape. After that's all dry, I'll use a black watercolor pencil to draw on the lower eyelashes. Alright, now that the eyelashes are all drawn, I'll use a black pastel to add some shading. Alright, I'll just seal this in with a layer of Mr. Super Clear, and to finish up the eyeshadow, I'll add a layer of Dragonfly Glades to the eyelid. Alright, I'll just finish this up and let it dry. Then we can add some eyelashes to the doll. 
Today I'll be using Kiss Brand Faux Eyelashes in the style So Real. I'll just pull them off, measure them to the doll, and cut them to length. After that, I'll add some Elmer's Glue Wall to the eyelash and to the doll. Then I'll apply the eyelash. I'll use a pin to position the eyelash and scrape away any excess glue. Once I'm happy with the position for both eyelashes, I'll set it aside to dry. Alright, now let's move on to painting some eyes. As usual, I'll start with my typical eye base. I'll start by painting the iris a light blue. Then I'll add some purple, white, and dark blue details. Once I'm happy with the iris color, I'll paint in the pupil black. Then I'll add some dark blue shading around the iris. After that, I'll add some black shading around the pupil. Adding the black pastel really helps soften the pupils. See, just look at the difference. Alright, I'll just finish these up off screen. Now let's give her a tail. Here's the hair we'll be using for the tail and for the wig. Let's start by drilling a hole. I should have just printed her with a hole already, but I kind of didn't think about that, so now we're just going to drill a hole. Once the hole is all drilled, I'll wrap the hair around itself, forming a little donut. Then I'll add some glue to the hole, and stuff in the tail. And there you go, she has a tail. I'll style the tail off screen. Now let's move on to making the wig. I prepared the wig cap off screen. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll be using the same hair. I'll glue the hair around the perimeter of the wig cap. Alright, next I'll add tracks of hair going horizontally along the length of the wig. At the midway point, I'll change directions of the hair. After that, I'll add some wax to the underside of the wig and style it to one side. I'll use a hot chopstick to curl the hair. But I'm going to do all that off screen. Now let's move on to making some armor. I designed and 3D printed some armor. Here is the chest armor. Here's the shoulder armor, and the shin armor. These probably all have actual names, but you know, whatever. I'll prime all the pieces with some black Rust-Oleum spray paint. Then I'll use my airbrush to paint them silver. To make all the pieces sparkly, I'll coat everything with a watered down dragonfly glaze. I'll do this for all the pieces and then let it dry. Next we're going to make a closure for the shin guards. I want to lace up the back. 
So I'll make some rings so I can lace it up using some ribbon and some rings. I'll put the ribbon through the ring. Then I'll glue it together and cut off the excess. I'll make six for each shin guard, so 12 total. Once I make all the tabs, I'll glue them on. Alright cool, these look pretty good. Now let's lace up the back with some embroidery floss. After I tie the bow, I'll finish the embroidery floss with some beads. I also designed 3D printed, base coated, and painted silver, a piece of face armor slash tiara kind of thing that is really fabulous. I'll paint the gem at the center a purple to blue ombre just like the hair. Once the gem is painted, I'll add an iridescent glitter. Then I'll give it a shiny UV top coat. To finish it off, I'll add some ribbon and some chain. The chain goes around the ear. Alright, now let's move on to making her a staff. I don't think I've mentioned it at all so far, but she's going to be a mage. So this is her mage staff. I'll be doing a base coat of red-brown Tamiya for plastic spray paint. After that I'll do a black wash followed up by a dry brush highlight. I'll paint and finish the gem on the staff the same way I did the gem on the tiara. Now let's move on to making the rest of the outfit. I'm super excited to add a new robot to my army and introduce my Cricut. I'll be using it today to make my own print. I'm using an iron-on holographic vinyl and cutting a star print. After it's all finished cutting, it looks like this. Pretty cool. It took forever to peel off the backing, but here it is. Here are the sleeve pieces and the skirt pieces. Here's the fabric we'll be using today. I've already traced out the four sleeve patterns. Now we're just going to iron the print on one at a time. I'll put the piece down, add a piece of parchment paper, and then iron it. After I iron it for a little bit, I'll peel it off. Since I'm not using a professional iron press, sometimes it needs a little bit more ironing. I 
After I get it fully off, I iron it a little bit from the back side. I'll do this for all four sleeve pieces and for the skirt. Here's how everything turned out. I think it looks really awesome. But now let's start sewing. I'll start by sewing the side seam of the bodice. I'll do one side and then the other. Okay, cool. Now let's hem the top opening. I've already pressed it off screen. Don't worry about the giant hole at center front, that's just to reduce some bulk and the armor will cover that up. Next, let's gather the top edge of the skirt. The bottom edge is finished with some pre check. After the skirt is gathered, we'll sew it to the bodice. Alright cool, now I'll just press this over and do a top stitch along the edge. And a little bit later I'm going to cover up this top stitch with a piece of ribbon, so it's kind of pointless. Off screen I also added a velcro closure. Now I'll sew up the bottom of the skirt. I've added a layer of plastic wrap between the dress and the dress form. Now we're going to glue on the armor. I'll add some glue to the back of the armor and stick it on. Then I'll add a ribbon strap and glue on the shoulder armor. Now let's move on to making some sleeves. I'll start by sewing the front seam of the kimono sleeve. I'll leave an opening at the top for the hand. After I sew the partial seam, I'll press it open. After it looks like this, I'll hem the sleeve opening. Awesome, it looks pretty good. Now let's go back to sewing that seam. I'll go all the way around the box and then sew the shoulder seam. After that, I'll flip it inside out. Then I'll connect it to the shoulder armor off screen with a piece of ribbon. Here's how everything turned out. I think it looks really awesome. The super long sleeves and the stars in the ombre all enhance the wizardiness. Now let's add some more sparkle by gluing on some rhinestones. Alright, now let's move on to painting the hoofs. I'll be painting them blue and adding some blue glitter as well as a purple glitter. I'll add additional coats and glitter off screen. Since she's not wearing heels, she's a little wobbly, so I want to make her a stand. I designed and 3D printed a crotch stand. There's a space at the bottom for an 8th inch pole. I have a stainless steel pole, and I'll just attach it with some epoxy sculpt. I'll put the epoxy sculpt in, and then add the pole. Off screen I'll saw it to length and connect it to the base. The base is just a square of wood. I secured the stand with some epoxy sculpt. I also put a hole at the corner of the stand so that the staff can stand more securely. Now let's paint it. I'll be painting the top green and the sides black.
Once everything is all painted, I'll be adding some vegetation with some green flocking, some moss, and some roses. Of course, we'll be gluing everything on. I'll squirt on a bunch of glue and spread it out. Then I'll add the flocking, followed up by some moss, and then the roses. To finish this off, I'll add some more moss and a bunch more roses. And with that, the doll's complete! So here she is, here's the finished result. Oh my god, I love her so much, she's so adorable. I really love how the outfit turned out. The armor looks really awesome. Off screen I added a chain necklace as well as bows to the top of the sleeve. Overall I'm really happy with how she turned out. I decided part way through to make her a mage, and I couldn't be happier. I watch a ton of anime and a lot of isekai anime, and I feel like she would fit perfectly into that sort of world. She's definitely some sort of adventure. As I was working on her, the purple and blue color scheme really screamed magic and like maginess, so I decided to go with that. I wonder what other members make up her guild. There's definitely a lot of options. Please let me know if you have any ideas in the comments below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. For the rest of the video, enjoy the photos! Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video! Just a reminder, the other colorways are available at www.thehoneydoll.com as well as options to make your own customizable honey and stock dolls, so go check that out! Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one! Bye!